Hello, everyone, and uh, happy Memorial Day to all the uh, Zeno Nation fans out there. Hope you guys are all having a good holiday and uh, taking time to remember our fallen veterans of uh, you know past wars um, and so on. I know this has been a difficult um, holiday for many people with uh, you know some places still stuck in a lot of social distancing and, and restaurants and things being closed. But again, just remember the sacrifice that you know, our, uh, you know, fallen veterans made. So uh, the small sacrifice of, you know, maybe uh, having to wear a mask in the grocery store it probably isn't as a big of a deal when you consider people who do have lost their lives in war. And I don't want to po political size anything. I don't want to speak for Marcus, but I want to throw it over to Marcus uh, and let him, you know, give us his thoughts on the holiday. Yeah, totally agree with you, Ron. Memorial Day is a, uh is a solemn holiday. And I mean, I know it's the first weekend that people get out camping and that sort of stuff. And this COVID-19 thing, as you correctly said, Ron, it is kind of throwing a little shade on it. Uh, but as you also, as you say, I want to echo that, yeah, we are making some sacrifices now, but it's nothing like what the greatest generation did in World War II and the generation before that in World War One. And let's, let's not forget our Korean War veterans, our Vietnam War veterans, and our Gulf War veterans, both uh, Gulf One and Gulf Two, and Afghanistan for that matter. So uh, we have a lot of Americans that put their lives on the line for the rest of us so that we can do what we want to do. And Memorial Day is uh, when we remember those uh, that have fallen. And uh, like Ron said, we absolutely uh, want to pay our respects to uh, all those that made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Well said, Marcus, and thank you for those words. Uh, I guess you people have all realized we're not live tonight. We're taking the holiday off. This is a pre-recorded show that we recorded, um, you know, it, uh, it, over the weekend. And, um, you know, we thought we'd pick a subject. I mean, I know a lot of people, you know, maybe don't like that we we got away from the Zeno a little bit on, on the show. Uh, so we want to focus in uh, today on the Zeno and specifically the Zeno too. And um, Marcus and I, you know, both have been a little disappointed with the Zeno too uh, so far. Um, you know, it, 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 it hasn't led up to our high expectations and maybe that's our fault. You know, maybe we expected too much, but we're going to kind of go over the strengths and weaknesses of the Zeno 2 today, and uh, both of us get a lot of uh, questions from you know friends and followers and so on. Oh, should I get the Zeno 2 or should I get the Zeno 2 instead of this, that, and the other drone? And we're going to try to answer those you know those questions uh, uh, today, and um, you know, and uh, that's what the kind of show is going to be about. Uh, so if you're not a if you're not a Hubson Zeno fan at all, uh, you know you can sign out right now and enjoy the rest of your holiday. But if you have interest in the uh, in the Zeno, uh, I think we're going to present some you know some good information today for you and give you some perspective on uh, you know if you don't have it, you know what whether you should get by it or not. So. Um, Marcus, you want to start us off with uh, you know wherever you want to start today, and yeah. the show will go where it goes. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the Zeno two. I mean, we should, probably should talk a little bit first off about the features of this drone. It is a, uh, uh, a, a, a of course, three axis gimbal uh, drone with a camera that will shoot in uh, 4K, uh, 60 frames a second, which is probably its biggest calling card. Is that uh, 4K, 60 frames a second camera? Which is the, the the only drone in this class that offers that. Is that correct? I, I would say the only other one I can think of, the next one would be the Mavic Air 2. Uh, Ron, probably, yeah, I, I might be wrong, but that's all I can think of right now as well. Uh, it does have uh, downward facing uh, sensors on it uh, that should help with stability, but we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, that's a, little a sore bit. spot. Yeah, it is a hot rod drone. This is right now is probably the most powerful, fastest drone that I own. It's even faster than uh, my Mavic 2 Zoom. Uh, so, so this thing is uh, 
This thing is a really quick drone. You can get there. It has good flight time. I can't remember what the advertised flight time is, Ron. I think it's right around 30 minutes. I, th I think I typically get about 25 minutes uh, out of a battery. So that's that's uh, very, very uh, acceptable. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and of course, as you can see, it's a folding drone, right? I guess we don't have to mention that. Uh, so features-wise, it, it, it does have uh, some, a few intelligent flight modes. It will track. It does a pretty good job of tracking. It has... Uh, optical tracking as well as GPS tracking. The optical tracking is the one that works the west, the, the, the best. Uh, it has it has a, an orbit mode that is that works pretty well because you can set it, it again will be by either GPS or optical tracking. Uh, well not optical tracking, excuse me, point of interest tracking where you fly it over the top of something as the center back off and then it will circle. And, and or you can make the transmitter the point of interest and it will circle the transmitter. It has, uh, a, 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 I think they call them creative video. It's got what they call a panorama mode, which is not what you would think of traditionally as panorama. The drone just does a 360 in the air with video. So it just yaws around and you can set it where it would just do 180, 360, whatever percentage of that you would want it to do. And let me throw in, it does also take a, a true panoramic photo. And it and it does now take panoramic photos as well. They just came out with the Comet mode, uh, which is uh, the best I can describe that is it's similar to an asteroid. Although a, poor man, a poor man's asteroid. Poor man's asteroid, or not asteroid, excuse me, boomerang. I meant boomerang, say. yeah. And, and it, but it's not quite as, uh, as dramatic uh, as that. And, and the, the, another feature uh, that it has is uh, it's got a line fly mode. I can't remember what they call it, line fly, but, but you can set the angle of the drone. And it, that, on the old, original Xeno, that was unlimited to 100 meters. Now it's unlimited. You can have that drone fly sideways or whatever in a straight line, however far you want to go. And, and think, think, of it, think of that mode as a waypoint mission with only two points, a start and a finish. And then it also does have a waypoint mode. And I think those are the features. And Ron mentioned that, that it does have some panorama things. Uh, it, uh, uh, the camera wise, I, I'm trying to remember, Ron, I don't think it goes down to 720, but it starts at 1080. And I'm trying to remember what the. I, know, I got the numbers up here. Yeah. 720p all the way up to 120 frames per second. Uh, 1080p all the way up to 120 frames per second, 2.7 up to 60 frames per second, and of course 4K up to 60 frames per second. And just to update on the maximum flight time you mentioned, it's uh in that it says win windless, 33 minutes. Remember we were laughing at that where it said yeah it said windless, but it says windless 33 minutes. But like Marcus said, in, in mixed flying you'll probably get in in the, you'll probably, you can probably get 25 minutes if you land on like you know, 15% or something like that. It, suffice it to say that that it does have a lot of features. I'm not going to, well, I, you call it a full-featured drone because I know of a lot of other drones that have more features built in, but it does have a lot of features built it, in. It, it has most of the core features. Would that be fair to say? That like, would it, be fair to say. Yeah, I, I mean, again, yeah, you're right. There's more full-featured drones even in this kind of price range. But it has the, you know, the, the ones you really need uh, for the most part, I believe. Yeah, yep, yep. I, I, I agree. So that's just kind of a general idea of the drone. Now, the, one of the things that Ron and I have discussed frequently is price. And Ron has done a bunch of research on price. Yes. Um, we have now was preferences by Marcus and I both did the uh, the gear best pre order so we locked ours in at three ninety nine plus I I think it was some tax or shipping whatever I think mine came came to four twelve but but we locked it in to um, you know to, at three ninety nine so but right as of today and this is this is five twenty four May May five twenty yeah May the twenty fourth let me spit it out of here a uh, uh, two thousand and twenty so today. If you want the gear best, this drone would cost you five ninety one ninety. 
Um, if you want the bang good, you, you can, as of today, you cannot, and at least for U.S. order, you cannot order, you cannot order just with a drone, the controller, and the battery. You have to get the storage bag, which brings it to six thirty nine ninety nine. And if you want the Hubson.com, the official Hubson website, it's five forty nine, and that's again, I'm giving you all prices: just drone, controller, and uh, battery. And Hubson U Hubson same prices. So um, that's kind of the you know what it is today. So uh, uh, we're going to talk about this at, at three ninety nine. This drone, you know, still would be an option to consider, but at at, at almost six hundred dollars with gear best at over six hundred at Banggood, it's just hard for us to recommend this drone anymore, especially with uh, the new entry to the market, the Mavic Air Two. I mean, the Mavic Air Two, the base unit is. Is seven ninety nine, so you would only have to add one hundred and sixty dollars, you know, to step up from the Xeno two to the Mavic Air two, and it's a huge, huge, you know, uh, a, a jump in price. Uh, would you agree, Marcus? Yeah, to to totally agree. I, I I just, quite frankly, I think five hundred and forty nine dollars they have priced this drone uh, out of the market because there's other drones like the. Uh, Femi X8 SE that you can get for right around $400 that have uh, not exactly the same features, but are a similar drone. And Ron, I also want to add, there was one big feature that I left out when I went over the features and that's range. It does have least two and it has an eight kilometer range. I just want to make sure we got that in there because I forgot to mention that earlier. Uh, yes. That, which which a lot of people, that's a big deal for a lot of people. And I will say that I, I, I don't want to speak for Ron, but I don't think either one of us have ever had a connection issue with the Xeno 2. Never flown it out of range, never, you know, good, solid yeah. connection. Yeah, good, good point. And, and now we've got the prices out there, and, and we've, we've said that it's a little overpriced right now. I mean, what, what's, instead of like, you know, going to the negatives right away. What's going some of the positive? Marcus already covered it. You know, I, I haven't got it out eight eight kilometers yet, but uh, the range and not range and FPV connection, you know, have never been an issue. I, I've had the thing out, uh, you know, I don't know, at least a mile, and uh, again, no no issues at all in, in that respect. Uh, just like Marcus, and also I agree with Marcus. It's my fastest drone. And 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 it matches. It, it's at least on par with any drone I have as far as performance in high winds. You, you know, one of the this is gonna one of the most fun things about this drone. It, it is not a quiet drone by any means. So if you're trying to be stealthy, don't don't get this drone. But I'm not saying I'm saying that that can be a positive. I'm telling you, when you hit the throttle on this baby. It sounds like a Formula One racer. It is so fun to hear that thing screaming by above you. It's uh, it, it'll it'll make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Good point, Marcus. It, this yeah, this it's loud, but it's loud in a good way. It's not that annoying right. high pitched whine of like a Mavic Air One or whatever. Where some drones are loud and they have it, this getting this real whine sound. This one actually sounds like it. It almost sounds like it's the sound effect coming out of there, making it sound like like a hot rod. So yeah, it, it has a has like a a good loud sound to it, like getting like you've got a muscle car, you know, a muscle drone, I guess you would call it out there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, totally agree. So, and, so could be, the loudness could be a negative, but it's not as negative as as it could be. And 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 and, and Ron, I'm gonna run this one by you too. Uh, the other thing that's fun is when you do hit the throttle and you're looking up at that drone, boy, it is banked forward. And it is getting with the program. It's it's really yeah. fun to see that. If, if people like to see that pitch in their drone, this yeah. one you're definitely going to see that pitch. And we we just mentioned the wind issue because Marcus has a famous video where he took the mini out a little bit too far to stay canyon a windy day. He had to make an emergency all state landing. But I'm sure he would tell you if he had a Zeno two out there that day, he could have stayed right in the same spot. Yeah, you wouldn't have even known it was windy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's way more powerful. I could have stacked six Mavic Minis on top of the Zeno 2, and it still would have flown back. <laughs> no no problem. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, so, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's a powerful drone. Right. So, I mean, the positive is the power, the range, 
the FPV signal. Um, I was going to roll into something else here. A good battery life. I mean, like, you know, 20, 25, 25 minutes from a drone says it gets 33. That's about par on the course, you know, so it, it, it yep. gets what you expect. We always expect five minutes less of battery life than what they state. So it's it's right in there with DJI and any maker. So 25 minutes is good. Um, well, the point yeah. to make there is you, very seldom are you going to run that battery clear to zero, right? I mean, Ron, I know both you and I, we're typically bringing it in at about 20% battery. So, right, right. I, I and you know, um, yeah, I may, you know, when it's his 25%, I'm, I'm starting to bring it back, especially if it's kind of, you know, not that close or whatever. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm sure we could push it out into the upper 20s if we landed on, what, 5% five, five or below. But, I mean, this isn't a battery discussion here, but most people would recommend not not trading your battery that far down again. I'm not going to go into a battery discussion. That could be a whole show. Yeah. So, so, so that's some of the positives. I'm trying to think of uh, other positives before we start going into the, the negatives here. I mean, you know, one positive, which isn't important to all people that, you know, it has the uh, LCD right on the screen there, kind of like the Mavic's doing. I don't believe the Phoebe has a built-in LCD screen, does it? Uh, no, the Phoebe does not. Yeah. But, 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 but we're talking about positives. The other thing is, is uh, yeah. The gimbals uh, on on the uh, original uh, Zeno uh, controller, as opposed to this one, they're they're a lot tighter on the Zeno too. And it's the the original Zeno feels very toy grade. The, this one feels like a real controller now. Yeah. Uh, again, that um, you know the uh, the screen is, a, and even even the Mavic, our beloved Mavic Air too. I could call it beloved already. All you got to do is slide that thing a couple times, and it's beloved by everybody. But um, you know, it doesn't even have a screen built on, so that's kind of unique in this in this price range. I mean, the four K sixty and the built in screen are very unique in, in this price range. So again, we're not here killing the Zeno too. I mean, it has some nice qualities that other drones in its price class you know, it doesn't have, but I, what we're going to get into, but it misses some of the essential basics. It gets some of them wrong, which is really, I think the, the gist of Marcus and I's kind of issues or whatever, like it, 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 it it's weird that it, it does some things really well that other drones don't, but then it misses some stuff, real basic stuff that other drones do much better. Is that kind of a good way to? That, that is spot on, Ron. Exactly <laughs> right. Uh, and we, this wasn't meant to be a live show, but we, we put it on list. We we got da Daniel T in here with us, who who's a big fan of the show, and I appreciate him being in here. It, it's not really a live show, but you're welcome to sit in and uh, you will read your comments here. He's talking about the Zeno Pro, and that's the only thing in this conversation. Mark said neither of us own the Zeno Pro, so we can't really comment on on that one as much. And while neither of us own it, we're, we don't not downing the the product at all, but by the time we got our heads wrapped around the ordering the, the Zeno uh, Pro, we already knew that the Zeno 2 was coming. So, I mean, exactly. you know, we, we didn't want to make, you know, it just didn't make sense of the buy the Pro when we knew the Zeno, because we got, we heard rumors as early as what, like October or maybe even earlier that the Zeno 2 was coming. Yeah, it was going to be a, a deal. Yeah, yeah, and we just bypass all, all, all on the Pro. But, um, Okay, we kind of covered some of the strong points. Did I forget anything on the strong points? I mean, I know we're getting something, but yeah, we we'll, we may think of it later. But but I I I can't think of anything, Ron. So so what, let's jump right into um, kind of our you know our real issues with the um, the Zeno two. And I think both of us may have the same one at the top of our list. But I'll let you go first, Marcus. Well, well, because. Uh, I think Ron, you can speak way better to camera issues than 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 I can. Uh, I'm going to start, and I think you should speak to those issues that we're both talking about. Uh, but w one of the things, one of the, it's it's a relatively minor issue, but it's worth mentioning. So this remote, uh, it it it's it's as I said earlier, it, I feel pretty good about it. It's a good remote. The only downside is holding a charge on it. Uh, you can run about two batteries through the drone, and this baby needs recharging. And part of that is because it wants to charge your cell phone. In fact, it does charge your cell phone. So 
One of the things you have to think about when you're flying is make sure your mobile device is fully charged before you start because it this it it'll suck the battery right out of this guy. Uh, and but even at that, it is a very very uh, power intensive remote. And the most I've ever got is two batteries through the drone charging this once. And most of the time, that's probably not a problem. But you know, I can appreciate if you were out away someplace and didn't have access conveniently to be able to recharge the thing could be an issue. It's just something to bear in mind. Uh, and I think we're going to talk about, you know, issues that could be fixed and some that can't be fixed. And this could be fixed in a future firmware update by just putting in a, 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 a toggle switch in there so you could turn off charging your cell phone. Totally agree. That would probably gain you another, another flight. Yeah, that would be a welcome addition, Ron. And all, all would be, yeah, all we need would be a toggle switch from a future firmware update to fix this issue. So this is an issue, but it's not a unfixable d deal killer issue. To totally agree. And, uh, and, and I know where you're going, and I'm going to let you run with it because you're better spoken on that. Well, I, you know, I know we're, we're going to talk about the lens here, but I, I'm going to skip over that just for a second. Okay. I, I think the biggest issue it, for me, and, and, and I'm going to say for most people, because um, every, I mean, a lot of people have, you know, as the old saying, all Zenos are different. Like, you know, uh, some somebody's Zeno may do something different than other people's Zeno. But here's something I found every single person I've talked to about the Zeno 2, the landing issue. Not one person says there there is lands well. And I remember our good friend Johnny Droneflyer. The day he got his, uh, he was he was messaging me like crazy. He couldn't get the thing to land. He couldn't get the propellers to turn off. It flipped over on him, you know. And and you know and, and, and you know my I mine didn't flip over, but I had the same thing. I had to hold the controller stick down longer than I've ever seen a drone to get the propellers turned over. But our friend Marcus Crawford, he did the research. He found out why why this is happening, and you want to share that with him? Yeah. So so uh, I'm just speaking of my experience on mine, and I but I suspect others probably have the same issue. But 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 the altimeter on mine, uh, when, when you look at all the information at the bottom of the screen there, when it's uh, 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 giving you all the data on the drone, when mine it, it doesn't know where the ground is, and now. What's unforgivable to me about that is it has those downward facing sensors. It has a time of flight sensor and it has an optical flow sensor. For sure that time of flight sensor should tell it how close to the ground is. And if, when I look at the altimeter on mine, often uh, when, when I land it, it'll still think it's six feet up in the air. So it's no wonder those props aren't, sh aren't shutting off because the drone thinks that it should still be flying. And uh, I had that happen, what Ron was describing that Johnny Dronefire did. At one point, uh, I had the props continue spinning, and the drone actually spun around and did a 180 on the, on the ground, uh, and I was holding that stick uh, all the way down. Now, you can go, I believe it's down and out, and, and kill the props, do the emergency stop, but I mean, would even be afraid to do that, Ron, because when it's on the ground, when you're initially moving those sticks, it's going to think that's a command, right? Mm -hmm. And so that could exacerbate the situation. Uh, it, it's just, to me, this this is just the one single issue that is just unforgivable on this drone. But if because it has those downward facing sensors, you would think this is something that they could get right. And like Ron said, virtually everybody we know has had that problem and i can think of another issue ron if we're ready to go into that uh, yeah i i just want to you know uh, uh concur you know I, i've i've never had mine flip over because of, i always want to turn off but i mean one of the first times i've flown it's happened again where a wind has caught it and, and really made really made it rock or whatever because it, it wouldn't turn off quick enough i've seen the wind get under it and kind of push it back up again on me and uh, it is scary for a second, but yeah, I agree with you. I wouldn't do the down out one. So on that, if you hold the you know the stick down and you keep it down, it will turn off eventually. But again, what I've seen happen is 
the wind the wind gets caught under it and pushes it back up again. And I do want to confirm I get the same rings as you do on the uh, on the height of the drone. It, it still thinks it's you know I don't know a foot or two up in the air when yeah, it's it varies. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, it, I, I concur in that too. But but go ahead with what where you were going with the next. Well, you just made me think of one more point when you were talking there. The last two automated landings I did with the Zeno 2, it for that same reason that we're talking about, it doesn't know where the ground is. It literally bounced. And this is on an automatic landing. It comes down, hits the ground, bounces up, comes back down. L last two times I've landed it with a return to home automatic landing, it's done that. And, and, and that's a problem. But the other thing I was talking about, Ron, and I know you've had this problem too, is that almost everybody I know at some point with the Xeno 2 has had the toilet bowling issue. I had it once. Yep. Yeah. And, and uh, I had it uh, one time really bad, another time not so bad. But virtually everybody that we've talked to has had at one time or another ran into that. Now, uh, I've always been able to cure it with a compass calibration but what i'll add about that is the drone typically when a drone has a compass issue it will tell you on the app that, that it's got that, that it needs a calibration the drone has never had that said hey i need i need a calibration you know you just get that toilet bowling and and uh, there's times that that can be dangerous if you're around people or something, you know, and you're trying to bring it down, that, that could be downright dangerous. Uh, I would say what you'd want to do in that point is just kill kill the motors and the drone be damned. You might destroy the drone, but at least you wouldn't hurt anybody. Uh, but uh, the the it, it can be very difficult to, to get that drone on the ground in those uh, in those type of situations. So uh, that's just another thing that's it's just another one of those deals. Yeah, uh, just tough. It's that's almost unforgivable. And and, and let it, let let's throw in there because I know some people say about uh, you know calibrating after updates. Both Marcus and I, you know, we do both of us. I think do compass calibrates after firmware updates, regardless of whether it asks for or not. At least I do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, but I do not calibrate every flight. You know, only only if it asks or only after a firmware update. And my and my. Um, what what do we call the issue again? Where it spins? I, I, uh, oh, one issue could have been my fault. I took it off a cement wall, and it may have been metal in that cement wall. So it may have been my fault that it went into that uh, tool bone because of again where I where I took it off of because that I took it to another location a mile away and took it off off a landing pad on this on the sand, and it was immediately better so it, it could have been that could have been my fault I, I just thought of something Ron that that they recently added in the last app update is now when you first fire up the drone it gives you a drone status report and tells you all, a go or no go on all of those things so so they may have corrected yeah. that and, and and that's a nice new addition or whatever and uh, again we're not trying to beat Hubsit down they do a nice job of that of of, of of firmware updates and adding you know i mean not just useless features th th that was a good feature so some people update that features you know that nobody cares about them, but that was a great add to it or whatever and uh so th that's encouraging but we're going to segue from you know the tour bowling and the not landing over into another pet peeve we've kind of touched this with sensors the the the, the drone stability you know, we all assumed that when we were getting all those downward uh, facing sensors that, you know, we the hups and drop would be gone and, you know, we would have a better hover. I'm not saying a DGI hover or whatever, but, you know, at least uh, acceptable hover. And um, some of us have more than others. I mean, I, I've had I've had some real good takeoffs and hovers, but I will say that they're inconsistent. Sometimes it'll just take off. It's like a rock there. It doesn't move. Other times it does move, but my friend Marcus hasn't had as good experience as I have with this. Have you, Marcus? Yeah, I mean it's just hard uh, at at low speed, and and I've even tried putting it in that uh, I don't know if they I can't remember if they call it tripod mode, 
what do they call it on here, Ron? Yeah, uh, I, I, it does switch here. I have to turn it on. To yeah, see yeah, it says F, and I can't remember what that stands for. Film mode. Film mode. So when you put it in film mode, uh, it it slows it way down, and and I've noticed that it, it's even a little bit. It'll move around quite a bit even in that film mode. So and then I've tried uh, some some uh, low altitude forward flight tests. Because as we all know, the original Zeno didn't have any sensors, and it it was notorious for diving uh, when you went straight forward or backwards, and so you had to be careful. It's no different with this one. It 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 tries to make that dive, and I, I famously on one of my videos, I went forward like that, and boy, it got down within a foot of the ground. I let go of the stick, and the drone, Ron, it was in a hover. But it immediately shot up to 24 feet from barely above the ground, and then it sank back down. Uh, so I, it, it's just, what are those, again, Hubson, what are those downward-facing sensors for, if not that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had a better experience. I, I, I have a video where I call it the perfect hover, where it took off on the beach. It was kind of breezy and whatever. It just hung there and did not move or whatever for, for a couple minutes before I took off flying it. And I've, I've had that happen other times, too. But, again, it's not 100%. And um, I, I just think that they need to make better use of the sensors they put on the, uh, on the bottom uh, of the camera. Again, uh, I'll backtrack. The things, the landing issue could be corrected. The firmware update, um, you know, the this issue with the the sensors not being working well enough, strong enough, whatever the proper word is, that could be fixed with the firmware update. Total Boeing, I I guess so. You know, um, so a lot of these issues, you know, if they put out the mother of all firmware updates, a lot of what we've complained about so far can be fixed. But potentially could be corrected. To totally agree. Right, right. But one issue that that I don't think can be corrected is the um, the lens flare issue, and also the overexposure issue. If you aim the camera anywhere near the sun, it can handle the exposure. And I mean, it has the um, I've looked up the number. It has that a Amarella. 22 image chip, so it doesn't seem to be a processing issue. A lot of people speculate that the, the lens wasn't properly coded, and uh, that, that could well be it. I mean, I can't say for sure, but but it definitely could be a, a lens coding issue in the lens flare. And uh, as far as not handling the exposure well, I, I don't that that could be somewhat software based because again, it seems like it has a chip strong enough to do it. I don't think that's all lens and lens cover related. So hopefully they could maybe fix a little bit of that overexposure issue through a firmware update, but I don't think we're ever going to get rid of the lens flare, no matter how many people that work for Hopsy claim that it, it all it takes is a, a, a filter for it. I, I, I you know, if, if a filter could fix it, it's the miracle filter. So let's also add to, to go on the flip side of that coin, Ron, is that, that, that when the sun is at its back, Wow, that 4K camera shines. It looks, it's got a really nice, uh, nice look to it. Nice picture. Yes, and we're gonna, you know, compare it to the Phoebe here, or we already did. And you know, I, you know, I can only talk about the Phoebe, the Phoebe, the first one, Marcus's Phoebe. You know, I, I think I prefer the video a little bit better from the Zeno Two. Again, when it's facing away from the sun, and I, I think that the pictures. Are a little bit better out of the Zeno also. Um, the, the photo stills, um, it takes a nice photo. I don't like the raw photos out of it or the DNG, but the JPEG looks really, uh, they look really nice. The, the DNGs, the, they come out so raw or whatever, so that, that you know, they need so much correction that it, it's almost not worth a uh, full one unless Lightroom would get a preset to correct them, which, which isn't going to happen, but. Um, but no, the, the, the camera is good, but but when you can't aim it towards, you know, bright exposure, it kind of limits your what you can do with it. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and then I have a big issue with the camera uh, that they may or may not have corrected somewhat with this last firmware upgrade. I can tell you this, Ron, on my last flight with the Zeno 2, 
it was improved, but not eliminated. And, and this is an issue that I've seen. If you look at YouTube videos of people flying the Xeno 2, you will see it on everybody's YouTube video. And that is micro shakes in that gimbal. You'll see just a little jitter. And uh, that just drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and what I will say is where I noticed it mostly was when the drone was descending, you would see it. And then mostly in high-speed flight, but not always. I've seen it other times as well and on other people's video as well. And I will add, like I said, my last flight with it, while it wasn't gone completely, it was improved quite a bit. And and I don't know, Ron, is that is that something they can fix in firmware? I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, it, it's hard to say, you know, whether it's a mechanical issue or whether it's a software issue. Um, so let's hope it is a, more of a software issue that, that, than a hardware issue. And, you know, usually if something's a hardware issue, it, it happens almost all the time, you know, or consistently where we're seeing it, you know, in the same situation happen, not happen. So uh, that would maybe give credence that's maybe the software problem that it, that it's it, that it's inconsistent but um yeah and with electronic image stabilization could it be corrected right and you know while we're on that subject and i don't want to cause an earthquake here but i'm going to go to my little uh table here where i have the uh the xeno the xeno one over here and the xeno two over here and why i'm going there is marcus i talked about this issue a couple weeks back and so i went back and and got some, not, not just for that, but got some video I took with the Xeno One last summer in the same location down here at the beach. And guess what I noticed in the Xeno One video? It also had a lens flare. Not, I won't say it's not quite as bad as the Xeno Two, and I shouldn't even say that. Different. It's a di the lens flare was in different spots, and also I saw the same micro shaking in the Xeno One video from from last summer as I did in the Xeno 2. And again, inconsistently, not always there, but but sometimes there, even in the Xeno 1. Now, I don't know what version of the software it was on at the time. You know, uh, maybe it didn't do it on the soft, on the firmware after it. Maybe it didn't do it on the software before, but the software I was flying with that month, you know, had the same, you know, uh, uh, micro shakes in the gimbal as the 2 did. So, um, you know, these problems, a lot of the problems were mentioned didn't start with it the Xeno 2, they kind of carry over from the Xeno 1. Yeah, and of course, I, I we talked about that too. My Xeno 1 footage, uh, I went back and looked at some of it, and boy, I found a little bit in a couple of situations, but not very often. It was Mine was pretty steady. So uh, like we've talked about before, Ron, is there can be a variation drone to drone as well. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. And again, maybe I just have to look at the firmware update from the Zeta 1 that had that issue. Maybe the next firmware update took care of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, who knows? Uh, so, um, so yeah, that, that's what it is. So, I mean, you know, again, we, you know, maybe none of these issues we said are, are a deal, deal killer on a Zeta 2, but I would say the landing issue is the closest thing we have to a, a deal killer. The landing issue and the and the shakes in the camera for me, Ron, are the two. I totally agree. Honestly, the instability that we're talking about, I feel like I can deal with that because, quite frankly, how often are you flying that low to the ground? Not not very often. Usually right. you're up higher than that, and and that doesn't make that big of a difference. But the, but the landing problem and for me those micro shakes are the two big things. But the 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 uh, the 800 pound gorilla in the room for me, Ron, at this point too, is that price where they have it priced now. Uh, I just, I just struggle to recommend the Xeno two to anybody because there's better alternatives on both sides of it, on the cheaper side and on the more expensive side. True. Did you notice how how much bigger the box of the the Xeno two is? Not much. I mean, they're pretty darn close, aren't they? And, and, the, I think. and the width is, the width looks exactly the same. Yeah. It's yeah. just the length is, is a little bit higher. And, so. and, and uh, I want to point out that the 
the Xeno two is it, it's quite a lot. It's a quite a lot bigger drone. So I'm holding them even here, and you can kind of yeah, you can see that 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 the Xeno two is taller. And I can tell you weight wise, there's a big difference. The Xeno uh, one's almost like the Xeno mini. Almost, yeah, almost, yeah. But but I, I took you off from. But back to your point, like. Um, Right now, with, with the pricing as it stands, could you really recommend the Xeno 2 to over, you know, uh, some of the competitors? And we'll say mainly the, the FEMI, uh, you know, uh, X8 uh, 2020. No, I, yeah. I can't. And, yeah. and, and then, and then if, if somebody comes to me and, and, and says, well, you know, I like that 60 frames per second or whatever, I'm going to say, well, okay. You've got five hundred and forty-nine dollars. Can you come up with another two hundred and fifty and buy the Mavic Air two, and then you are in a whole new class of drone. Right, right. And, so and on both sides of it, there's better alternatives. Right, right. And even you know we we, you know that the you know the Fem the X eight and also you know the the, the uh, we got the the Mavic Mini in there for three nine nine basically around the same price that the the female probably be when all the sales are over right yeah yeah the, the, the female probably a three hundred nine nine drill once all the dust clears and things are back to normal I mean that's just my opinion the, to to your point Ron also you know we I cannot believe that Hubson will not reduce the price on this drone because you and I have done this calculation in our heads. You know, we're, we're nothing special. So I'm sure the average purchaser is doing the same thing and coming up with that same calculation. So right, right. Now, who, who, who's reading the specs between the Hubson Zeno 2 and the Femi X8 2020? Who's looking at the spec sheet and then, you know, and then come away with the conclusion, well, I'm going to spend you know, over two hundred dollars more to get the, you know, a, a drone that basically has a lot of the, most of the same specs. Exactly, exactly. Uh, some better and some a little worse. And we talked about this. You got sixty frames a second in four K on the Xeno two. The the uh, twenty twenty version of the Femi X eight will have HDR on it, which is a nice camera feature. Right. So you know, a little of one, a little of the other. Yeah. The, the, the the positives and negatives while we're on it, let me tell you what that Hubson just has down pat that I love is they always have a perfectly stable horizon. Yeah, I mean, we they, that. yeah that's yeah, important. They've yeah. got that nailed. Uh, and and, and, fact, and I would go in there that you know you bought the gimbal. Uh, the a, a, a straight horizon is almost just as important as a study gimbal. Pretty damn close. I totally agree with you. And in fact, I'm going to go way out on a limb, and I'm going to say that Xeno 2 may even have a better horizon than some of my DJI drones, because I will notice occasionally a little bit on a DJI drone. It can be off for just a second. I've never seen that on the Xeno 2. It's just <laughs> flat. Yeah, now, yeah, it's amazing how that drone, when the things it does right, it does really right, but it misses right. so many of the, of, the thing, of the easy stuff. Right, exactly. Whereas the Femi, now we have, neither one of us have seen the 2020 version yet, but Ron flew, I've got the 2018 version, Ron had it for a while, and uh, it, it, it's the most frustrating thing about that drone is that uh, sometimes you will get a tilted horizon, and sometimes it can be fairly significant on that drone. Now, often you can fix it by, by banking back and forth or doing a yaw back and forth, and it will flatten it out. Okay, you could edit that out, but are you going to miss that great shot while you're dinking around with your uh, Cricket Horizon? So, uh, yeah, uh, Peter, yeah, and, 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 you know, and, and, and it's you know, it's not inconsistent. I mean, my very first flight, I saw it. You know, I, 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 I mean, it was there, and like I said, I could Marcus, I could correct by doing a fast y'all. I could correct it, but it could come back. You know, during the same flight. It wasn't like it was corrected for good. It could come back on, on, on the same flight. Yeah. Yeah. And that is just so frustrating. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and, and you know, it just seems like, you know, it's all a software issue. It's not mechanical. So you'd think that could be ironed out, but uh, yeah, again, I, I'm no programmer. So, uh, and you know, but back to alternatives or whatever, you know, you got the, you know, get the Mavic Mini, 
which uh, you know doesn't have uh, you know 4K or 4K60 or HDR or some of the stuff that the Femi and Xeno 2 have. But um, I, I would go and I would go out and limb and say the the 2.7 30 frames per second video out of that at the end of the day it looks better than the 4k coming out of the other two drones i'm not going to quite go that far <laughs> because i can see the difference in resolution but but here's what the mini does for me that i really like ron and i know I'll often professional photographers are critical of this but it's a very sharp picture and mm -hmm. many people say it's over sharp I don't know. That appeals to me, but I like that about the mini. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, like on social media and stuff like that, sharp looking, you know, sh over sharp video is, is kind of a thing. But I mean, the mini, you know, it um, it no landing issues with the mini. There's no gimbal issues with the mini. There's no horizon issues with the mini. There's there's no you know, again, I think I said shaking gimbal. Um, there's no. Uh, you know, they're not staying on the air or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the, the battery life is is as good as the, these bigger drones. Um, and it flies fast. surprisingly fast. I yeah. mean, you, yeah, yeah, you know, you're 27, 28 miles an hour, which just blows my mind. Now, the biggest negative is not it's nowhere as good in the wind as the other two drones we mentioned, but but it actually has surprisingly good range. It, it has. I've had mine out over a kilometer, so yeah, they it, it as well. Yeah. The, the, the only I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one more negative though in on the mini, and uh, it's been talked about a lot, uh, and that is that those rear propellers you can get an uncommanded descent. Those rear propellers can flatten out, so you need to be careful if you ever see it exhibit that behavior. And I think you also get a motor overpowered warning. I can't remember exactly what the verbiage is. Something like that. If you see that, replace those rear propellers right. immediately, and and then it, you'll get you'll get your mini. Right. Back. And remember the throw in there. that it's not perfect. And remember the throw in there. That's caused by the case that it came in. Keeping in the case it came in too much. If if you did order the fly more kit, you just you mini just sat in your desk or whatever. You probably wouldn't have those issues. Yeah. Yeah. And I, if I was a betting man, Ron, I would be willing to bet that either DJI themselves or the aftermarket will come out with a, a new prop that's just a little bit stiffer and resistant to that. But that'll tell you how finely tuned those drones are. Right, right. But there is a combo throw in the mini. I mean, this, not, I'm trying not to make this a mini show here, but on the firmware update that added shutter, manual shutter control to it, it also added the, um, it, it sensitized the wind warning too much. Now, I mean, if you are flying in a windy environment, I mean, it'll be on every few seconds. And even if you're flying in a normally windy environment, you'll see they've made the with the wind alert way too sensitive. So they've kind of taken some of the joy out of flying that thing. Uh, I mean, unless somewhere you live in a windless climate. Well, I, that is. I, I think that was a response to, quite frankly, so many people losing yeah. the wind. But now, right. Ron, we need to bring up what you what what happens with yours that doesn't happen with mine is Ron actually gets a shake in his uh, camera. Yeah, but like I got my PlayStation controller in my hand or something like that. And somebody said that I have, that's because I'm using an iPhone and I had that turned off, turned on in the iPhone settings, and I've never gone back in to, um, to verify that. So um, I, I'll, I'll try to dig in that deep. But again, we're not trying to turn this into the yeah, uh, that's show here. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but I'm going to throw another one out here. Okay, so say you're 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 stuck in that four hundred dollar ballpark or whatever, um, a, 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 and your main interest is, is camera quality. You can pick the Paranafi up on a refurb many times for around four hundred, and even and Michael Roach just posted this today in, in some of the Facebook groups. Where you can even buy it new for like four ninety nine. Much Ron, while we're talking here, I'm going to look it up. So. You know, look up live. And, and I can tell you for sure, if you if camera quality is your thing, it beats the Mini, the Femi X8, I can't speak for the 2020 yet, but the current Femi and the Hubson, you see the two, it's not even close. I, I, you, are, you are spot on. So uh, the Anafi... Uh, 
base now this is this is brand new this is a this is just stunning to me it's a two hundred dollar savings brand new this is not a refurb brand new four hundred and ninety nine or five hundred dollars yeah, yeah for a brand new pair of anafi now uh the anafi extended uh which gets you the case and uh two extra batteries is only another hundred bucks at five ninety nine that's just phenomenal. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what yeah. to say. Yeah. Uh, and the refurb run is just blank here. So they yeah, it says currently unavailable. Right. So. Yeah. And um, yeah, the drone's almost it'll be two years old this summer. It came out in July of uh, 2018. And I mean, a, a lot of people are going to get the negative because yeah, it it doesn't have you know the world's longest range. Uh, these drones we just the three we just mentioned. It probably has the least range of the bunch. Um, a battery life's about 20 minutes, so it's probably the least battery life of the bunch, too. Two axis gimbal, but you'd never know yeah, it. Yeah, you'd never know it because, um, you know, it, it, the gimbal in it looks better than, you know, um, it, probably the other ones or whatever. Maybe not better than the Mini, but the gimbal's probably more consistently good than the Femi and, and the uh, the Xeno 2. And, um, it's got a flat yeah. horizon. Flat horizon, and as far as intelligent features, I mean, um, you know, I, I'm not going to say it has more than the, the Phoebe, but it, 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 but the ones that have all work great. You know, I mean, it has it has it has features other I've never seen on other drones in, in software, and it, it's a um, waypoint um, program. It, it it's it's better than DJI's. You yeah, know, it's the best. and and the and the tracking, Ron. We got to. It not only has regular speed tracking, it has high speed tracking. So you can track a boat or a car with it and it'll it'll keep up. I can't remember up to 30 miles an hour, something like that, which is phenomenal. Now, the caveat there is there is no obstacle avoidance. Right. Like the, the Zeno 2 or the, the, none of the drones we're talking about in this category have it. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So you always, whenever I talk about tracking, I always want to bring that up because that drone will smack right into the side of a tree because it doesn't know it's there. As will the as will the the Zeno two or the Femi. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So anyhow, that's just some alternatives. And you even if even if that four hundred dollar mark or four to five hundred dollar mark is out of your range, I mean. There's always the the Zeno one, which you know we mentioned a little bit before. Which again, you can get it for um, as low as three hundred dollars at Banggood today. Um, and uh, you know, it, it, I think it's still an incredible buy. You know, you got the you know uh, what do you say this? Almost a twenty minute flight time, like high teens. High teens is high good teens. Yeah. You, you get about it. You you get what what is it, a mile out. So, so Ron, I get 15 to 16 minutes easily with a battery. Uh, the, the, the kilometer, mine stops right wow. at one kilometer, which, trust me, is plenty. Right. <laughs> and it's got, it's got a good connection on it. The camera, and Ron, you and I have talked about this many times. It is not a pro-grade camera, but, but it's damn good for what it is. Right. I mean, the, the 4K, you know, 30 out is, is definitely usable. Again, with the caveat, the same weakness as the Zeno 2, pointing the sun, it gets overexposed, and it has lens flare pointed away from the sun, and, you know, it, 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 it's decent 4K video. Right on. Yeah. 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 So, also, I want to also bring up, Ron, that often we, you see this thing on sale. Uh, in fact, I saw it on, the, on a European Banggood website, for two hundred and fifteen dollars recently, and and often you can pick this thing up for two hundred and fifty bucks if you're if you're patient. And yeah. at that price, it's just a steal. Yeah. No it see, it seems like all drone prices have jumped up recently. But we used to track this thing as low as what two hundred and twenty dollars, brand new. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've never seen it under two hundred. I've seen it pretty damn close, but yeah. I've never seen it under yeah. two hundred bucks. For some reason, drone prices seem to going up. Maybe it's the coronavirus uh it could be but again i still recommend uh the xeno one you know for anybody that's on a tight budget and we talked about this off air too and again if you're on a tight budget uh rather than you know maybe getting like a, 
some of the drones markers have been tested out the Beast drone, the, the Vizio, and the Esheen. We we would recommend probably looking at it, maybe a refurb or even going to eBay and buying a used Parrot Bebop 2, which would you you would rate that superior, superior to the drones that you've been testing out recently? Not even close. Not even close. Now, the Bebop 2 is just a and, – and the only experience I have is, is uh, Brian Singleton loaned me his for uh, – I think I had it for about a month and, and I flew it a few times. And uh, you're going, okay, it's only a, an EIS uh, stabilizer on there. How good can it be? It's freaking good. <laughs> it is a nice, stable uh, 1080p video, perfectly flat horizon. Uh, the drone, I think it has – when I first flew it, I thought, "Oh gosh, this thing's slow." And then I found sport mode, and yeah, it'll 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 move right along in sport mode. So yeah, if you can find one of those for two hundred bucks, or alternatively, like we just talked about, the original Zeno, you can find it on sale for two fifty. Hey, what's the battery life on that uh, Biba? You know, Ron, I don't remember, so I can't even. I mean, I mean, just just your average, like yeah. I mean, it, 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 it twenty minutes. Yeah, I mean, it flew long enough that I didn't complain about it. So yeah, I, I'm going to say it must have been fifteen minutes. And it has it has a decent flight flight range. Can it go like I don't know about thousand feet or? You know, I I I never flew it out of range. Right. Uh, but so I. I can't really I because it wasn't my drone, I didn't fly it out very far. Right. So I right. can't really answer uh, that. Understood. So anyhow, you know, um, I, I guess to wrap up here, um, and we started all talking about the Zenon 2 and why we're a little disappointed. But again, most of our disappointments could be fixed in um in firmware updates. And if we talked about the um the Zeno one at the same period, and let me backtrack a little bit here. We received our Zeno twos in what the middle of March or was the March. middle of April? I think it was March. The middle of March. So, so, so we've had the Zeno basically a little over two months. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, about two months. So if I did a re if I did the same review two months after I first did my Zeno one, I would have the same. I would have a, as big as a bucket list of issues as I have now. So that gives you people faith. I mean, I we got Daniel in here, and he's kind of looks like he's given up on a Zeno too. But maybe people would have given up on a Zeno one at the same spot. So maybe if this thing is still the Zeno two, if I'm still talking about the same things in six months, you know, then maybe maybe it is a bust. But you know, in six months, you know, if they just fixed up, I don't know, half of what we just said and and land, getting it landing correctly. <laughs> is almost number one on my bucket list. I mean, uh, I could have a whole different opinion about this, about recommending it. But the second most important thing, as Marcus says, is they've got to get that price down to um, somewhere in the ballpark. Four, four, as four, 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 are at. You're under, right? 450 yeah. or under, don't you think, Ron? It's got it's got to be it, with its competitor. It's got to be there with the Femi. Um, I hate to even say the Mavic Minis is competitor, but it's got to be priced with, with the drones. And it's class. It can't be a hundred, two hundred dollars higher for, for no reason. Yeah. Hey, you touched on something a minute ago that I that I don't want to let go, and and that is when this guy originally uh, came out. And if you owned it, you know, two months after it was introduced, Ron, do you remember the hate and discontent that there was online for this little drone? Uh, I mean, people were going nuts uh, with issues with it. And and what uh, and Hubson finally got the everything ironed out. They kept pushing out new firmware for it, and to this day, this little guy is one of my favorite drones. And uh, will I'll be flying this thing until you can't buy batteries for it. I, I can I can tell you that. Hmm. So uh, it's just a fun drone to fly. Yeah. It, it's not particularly fast. The camera's not particularly good. It doesn't have a lot of range, but it, it just does everything good, right? Yeah. Is that a fair way to describe it? It, it? it may be the best value of all time for for a drone or whatever the praise versus what you get out of it. You know, right. I, 
you know, uh, for a camera drone, I know somebody will say something, but for, for, uh, for a 4K camera drone, it may be the best bang for the buck uh, of all time or whatever. And, and, you know, it's held up. I mean, anybody can complain about Hubsa, but I mean, you know, if, if, if you didn't crash or whatever, and I, again, I know there's lemons out there, people got lemons, but I mean, it's still kind of, you know, it's mechanically, I mean, it flies better than the day I got it because of firmware things. Mechanically, it's as good as the day I got it. Yeah, no, that and that's that's mine. Well, I, I finally, uh, Ron, and I think I pointed this out to you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look for it to find it here, but I developed. Oh yeah, right here, I uh, I developed yeah. a crack in the in the body of the drone there. Now I don't really think that that's gonna affect anything because it's not the arm itself; it's in the body. So I'm just gonna take a little epoxy and uh, epoxy that up, uh, and I I think it's gonna be. I don't. I'm, you know, at some point, Ron, will, will will the motor seize up on us or something? I suppose maybe. I've got about a gajillion miles on mine already. I, so. I was say it, it, it'd be like us having I don't know, like a, a Chevy or Ford with the two hundred thousand miles on, it, and we say it's paid for itself many times already. It, that that is, it, I, I'm telling you. So when I bought mine, and I think you did the same thing. We got them on their initial deal. Uh, I paid two hundred ninety nine dollars for it. Trust me, I have got way more than two hundred ninety nine dollars worth of fun out of that drone. Right. So, so with the next flight, it, it it's you know it kicks the bucket and you know falls out of the air. Uh, you know doesn't know you anything. No regrets, as they say. Right. No regrets. Right. right. So, um, I, I guess that's our thoughts for now. Again, we're not here to bang on the on the on the Zeno two. I mean, yeah. I have great hopes that through firmware updates are going to correct a lot of the issues that we talked about today. Um, you know, I mean, they, they, you know, they better, you know, I mean, uh, you know, they need to keep the company going and, and keeping it vital or whatever. So, um, what, Marcus, you have some thoughts? Well, I just think there's one quick caveat to throw in there. And, and because we talked a lot about the Femi X8 SE 2020, Neither of us own that drone. So we may get that thing, and it has as many or worse issues than the Xeno 2. We don't know that yet. And we'll, and we'll point them out when it, if that does happen. Right, right. Well, what we do know is that it's priced more competitively. Right. Uh, I mean, just, just kind of wrap up. If, you know, if, if, if you're thinking about paying $639 in the Banggood price for um, you know, the Xeno 2, just, I don't know, you know, Wait a couple more paychecks or, or sell some other drones around you don't fly anymore and get that ex extra 160 in order to the Mavic Air 2. Uh, I mean, uh, I I could talk, I could give you the negative list of the Mavic Air 2, but I, I can't come up with one. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what that would be, too. It's a phenomenal piece of technology. No, somebody else that didn't have a one inch camera sensor. You know, well, or, or, no, what they'll say is, well, you've, you've got to get it unlocked to fly in a, in a restricted yeah. drone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 It'll be at like the first world problem or whatever. Yeah. And, and and if you again, if if you if you don't have even, you know, four hundred dollars to get a Femi X8 or whatever, again, you know, this guy, you know, look look for a good sale or as we mentioned before, Parrot Bebop too. You know, um, refurb, use, and they're not making them anymore, but there's still plenty out there that can be had, and um, you know. Um, Keep that in mind too. Uh, any, any disagree with any of this or not at all? And so you mentioned it earlier. So I recently uh, I had the the Esheen EX4, which is the twin to the Seafly Faith and the JJRC X12. Uh, what a disappointment! Uh, you know, I would put the the and and that drone. You can get it on sale. If I've seen it, the cheapest I've seen it is like $188 or something. But typically that drone is about right around $230 or so on Banggood. Uh, I would much rather fly that Bebop 2 than, than that Esheen. It's a much, much better drone. And the Xeno 1 also? Pardon me? And the Xeno 1 also, right? And the, Zeno, and the original Xeno. Both of those drones are just heads and tails ahead of that Esheen EX4. And, and then I've even tried a little bit cheaper drones, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the 
uh, the Beast Drone, the ZG906 Pro Beast Drone. Who it's comes up with these things? Yeah, I know. I know. You got to think really hard. Uh, it's got a two axis gimbal on it, mechanical gimbal. Uh, it's just, again, what a disappointment. And it's, it's priced, to, I've seen it anywhere from 180 to 150 bucks. Just not worth the money that, that I can tell. Uh, I, I also went out on a limb and I tried the, uh, the Visuo Zen K, even worse. <laughs> You're just throwing your money away. Just to what Ron was saying earlier, save up a few more bucks. Look for a used Bebop 2. Buy the original Hubson Zeno. You won't regret it. Uh, one quick question out the door here because uh, I'm sure you get this as much as I do. Okay, I got, I got you know, whatever, basically $400. Do I get the Phoebe X8 or, or do I get the uh, Mavic Mini? Depends on your use case. Now, if you're going to be flying someplace where you do have wind or you have a need to fly longer distance uh, and you want a, a higher resolution camera and you want more features, the Femi all day long. If you are looking for something that's just reliable as a stone that you're not going to have problems with, has amazing flight controls, uh, a drone that you are going to use more like a selfie drone, you know, closer in stuff uh, and not so much worried about flying in the wind, that Mavic Mini is just a stunning product. Good, good, good statement. I totally agree with you. I'm glad you brought up the flight controls there, which we haven't talked about a whole lot. The, uh, the, the, not only the Mavic Mini that we talked about, but the Perry and Alfie have much better flight controls than the other drones we talked about. They're much more precise on the sticks or whatever. You can, you can really control them more precisely than you can the other drones we spoke of in this list. The Anafi is right up there with DJI when it comes to flight controls. No right. question. Right. Yeah. And of course, everybody's always waiting for the Anafi too with the greater range and, and battery life. And I don't know if that's ever going to happen. But I guess we're going to wrap up here. Uh, we, we don't want to go. We don't want to take you away from your barbecues and uh, you know everything here, your celebrations. But just I just want to wish. Everybody, you know, again, a happy Memorial Day. And I want to thank all of you for, you know, being fans of the live show and, you know, subscribing to the channel and, you know, even visiting us on our other live shows and channels and just, just for all the support for all of you guys. You don't know how much we appreciate it. I mean, you know, we, you know, that's what keeps us going. Your great comments and, uh, you know, reaching out to us and, you know, things like that. So just could keep driving us to do this every week. And uh, I'll let Marcus uh, wrap the show up. We'll let you get back to your, your Memorial Day holiday. Yeah, well, so I'm just going to echo exactly what Ron said. You know, we have some of the greatest commenters uh, that I've seen. We, we we both get a big charge out of seeing the what goes on on the chat when we do those live shows. And people come up with some really good subjects to talk about. And, uh, man, we just appreciate you watching. That's what drives us to do this. Uh, Memorial Day holiday. Everybody uh, have a good uh, barbecue and enjoy it. Remember our, uh, our soldiers that, uh, that the reason that we have the Memorial Day holiday. And uh, we're still in the middle of COVID-19, so everybody just please stay safe. And uh, thank you very much. And we will see you on the next one.